Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome back to Brampton. For 15 long years, Brampton families pleaded with previous Liberal governments to deliver us from the chronic underfunding of health care, of not enough doctors, too few hospital beds, and not enough attention or investment to ensure access and quality of care. Those pleas went unanswered. But thanks to the leadership of Premier Ford, Brampton is no longer being ignored. Any government can say they stand with Brampton, but as I've said before, actions will speak louder than words. And the actions of our government leave no doubt that Brampton matters, that our families count, and that after a decade and a half of broken promises from previous governments, our city is finally getting our fair share. No Premier has put the needs of Brampton first like this Premier has. No government has invested in the growth and development of our community like this government and Premier has. And so Premier Ford, on behalf of every Bramptonian, thank you for your strong leadership and for delivering for the hardworking families of this city. Our community is stronger for it, and together we're getting the job done. Please join me in welcoming our Premier and Brampton's champion, Premier Doug Ford. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for that introduction, Prab. You and Amber Jot are incredible advocates for Brampton, and it's great to stand alongside both of you today. I also want to thank Councillor Charmaine Williams and Deputy Mayor Fortini and Deputy Mayor Martin Maderos for being here today. They have a great team down here in Brampton. On behalf of Minister Elliott, I want to thank everyone here at Peel Memorial and all across the William Mosler Health System. And I want to say to Dr. Martino, you lead a world-class team and we're so fortunate to have this group looking after the people and families of Brampton. And even through the weather, it isn't great today. Even though the weather isn't great today, it's a little miserable today, nothing was going to stop us from coming to Brampton and delivering what the people have been asking for, what they need, and what they deserve. This is one of the fastest growing cities in Canada. The population is booming as thousands of more people call Brampton home every year. But for decades, past governments stalled on expanding health care right here in Peel Region. Even though people here made themselves crystal clear, those governments chose empty promises and Band-Aid solutions. While other governments just talked and delayed and under-delivered, we're getting it done for the people of Brampton. And today, we're announcing that our government is investing an additional $21 million towards expanding capacity and improving services in William Osler's hospitals. 18 million of this funding will help to create a fully functional inpatient hospital right here at Peel Memorial. That means a new 24 seven emergency room and acute care services will finally be available to this community. And let me be clear, this new funding is in addition to the $18 million that was previously announced last year to expand operations at Peel Memorial. The remaining $3 million will be used to enhance cancer care at Brampton Civic, making it easier for cancer patients in the area to access the very best of treatment closer to home. It's all part of our government's plan to invest more than $30 billion over the next 10 years to build and improve Ontario's healthcare infrastructure. That's a historic number, the largest provincial health care investment ever made in Canada. And here's what it means for the people of Brampton. It means that there will be 250 more hospital beds after so many years of waiting for their fair share. But of course, building these beds is just one part of solving the problem. Because each of these new beds, each additional service that is available, means we need more trained doctors to properly staff them. That's why our government is adding 160 undergraduate positions and 295 postgraduate positions to Ontario's medical schools, the largest expansion in more than 10 years. And we're building a brand new Ryerson School of Medicine
that will open right here in Brampton. I think we all agree there's no better place for it than Brampton, where there's so much talent and strong desire for people to give back to their communities. And we want doctors from this community, trained in this community, serving this community. With these investments, we're putting the health of Ontarians first and building a stronger and more resilient healthcare system for the years to come. Our province has come so far. We can't afford to go back to the politics and no. Instead, your government is saying yes. Yes to training more doctors and nurses. Yes to investing in our communities. And yes to bringing the people of Brampton the quality of health care they need and deserve. Friends, let's say yes to a better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. We're getting it done. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Chair Jeffrey Ritchie. Thank you, Premier Ford, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Ritchie, and I'm chair of the board of the William Osler Health System. I'm thrilled to be here today with our Ontario government partners as we take this momentous step forward for hospital redevelopment in Brampton. On behalf of Osler, I would like to express our deep gratitude for the support of Premier Ford, Minister Sarkaria, Minister Elliott, and MPP Sandu for this new and exciting investment of $21 million that will help Osler build on our tradition of exceptional health care. Today's announcement is instrumental in helping us transform Pew Memorial into a new inpatient hospital, build more acute capacity here and at Brampton Civic to serve patients, and expand cancer care services for our community. The city of Brampton is the fastest growing large city in Canada, and it's also one of its most diverse. As someone who was born and raised in Brampton, in fact, here at original Pew Memorial Hospital, I have seen firsthand the need to increase our health care services and infrastructure as our community continues to grow. At Osler, we have never lost sight of the need to build for the future of our dynamic community, and planning for Brampton's new hospital and expanded cancer care services has continued to progress with support from Osler's incredible team, its patients, families, government partners, and the community. Today's announcement enables Osler to continue this vital work for the residents of Brampton and the surrounding region. The new Pill Memorial Hospital will transform hospital capacity in Brampton, and it will elevate Osler's long-standing tradition of compassionate, high-quality care for this community. Today's announcement also enables Osler to move forward with the important work in planning the expansion of our cancer care program, helping us to bring more life-saving services, including radiation treatment, closer to home here in Brampton. Put together, these vital initiatives will bring stronger health care capacity for this community for generations to come. It takes a collaborative effort to build a hospital, and I would like to thank and recognize our municipal partners whose commitment to health care for Brampton has never wavered. To Deputy Mayors of Brampton, Pat Fortini and Martin Medeiros, who are here with us today, thank you for your steadfast commitment. And to Mayor Patrick Brown and all members of Brampton City Council, thank you for championing health care and for stepping up and committing to the local share that is required to build our hospital services that our community needs and deserves. Once again, we are proud that today's funding commitment will enable Osler to build on the exceptional care already provided across our hospitals. We look forward to continuing on this journey together. Thank you. I would now like to invite Premier Ford back to the podium. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll now take questions from media. If you have a question, please join the line behind me at the microphone. It'll be one question and one follow-up per reporter. Good morning, Premier Ford. Good morning. It's Mal Hamidou, the Canadian Press. Yeah. Um, COVID cases and hospitalizations has been, have been on, on the rise for a few days now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expected some of this increase after yeah. most of uh, the uh, COVID restrictions have been lifted. Um, what, at, at what point, how bad it has to get for you to consider bringing back some, bringing back some of these measures, including mask mandates? Or is it like... Uh, no, no, there's no way you would do that anymore. Yeah, well, it's going to be up to the people. If they want to wear a mask, I, I wear my mask the majority of the places I go to. But I have uh, full confidence in the, the capacity that we we built here in the, the healthcare system. Uh, we have one of the most vaccinated uh, regions in the entire world. 
we have the immunity as well. We, we have the uh, uh, Pfizer antiviral pill as, as well. So we're keeping a sharp eye on it. I always recommend people to be cautious. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask our Minister of Health to come up, but speaking of the Minister of Health, uh, you talk about champions and all-stars. Uh, Christine has been incredible right from day one. Uh, she's been leading the way in rebuilding our healthcare system. She's leading the way in putting $30 billion into infrastructure, building hospitals across this entire province. She's led the way uh, throughout this pandemic. And uh, I just uh, think the absolute world of her. So maybe we can have uh, Minister, oh, there you are, yeah, Minister uh, Elliot. Thank you, Premier. Uh, we did anticipate that the numbers would uh, go up as we opened up Ontario and with the transmissibility of the BA2 uh, strain as well. So none of this is unexpected. Dr. Moore's commented on this several times. But we uh, do have a very highly vaccinated population. We have the antivirals coming on now as well. And we uh, do have the capacity now in our hospitals with the additional 3,100 beds that we've created since this pandemic began and the increase in uh, ICU spaces. So we're gonna watch it carefully, but uh, we're feeling confident with the capacity and with the vaccinations we have that we're in, in a good position. Okay, but uh, just as a follow up, if you don't mind, um, it seems like, I mean, I know we have made a lot of progress over the last two years, but is it, is it like we don't, we won't go back to these like max, mask funders, for example, let's take that for example. There's no benchmark, there's no point that you, can you tell people that you're not gonna wear masks, that they, these masks gonna, are not gonna be mandated again? Well, we're ha going to have to watch this. We've always taken a very cautious and gradual approach and the health and well-being of the people of Ontario has always been our number one priority. So we are following it, Dr. Moore and his team are following it and we're gonna make sure that if any changes need to be made, we won't hesitate to do that. But as things stand now, we are in a, in a very good position. Hi, Premier Jeff Greg Lomel. How are you? How are you doing, Jeff? Don't go too far away, Minister. You might uh, you might have to come back. I yeah, think. I think. Right uh, Social distanced, of course. Yes. Uh, Premier, about the announcement today. Yes. Uh, you mentioned other parties, other governments hadn't acted quickly enough, had delayed in getting Brampton the health care that it needs. I know the opposition is going to say uh, about this announcement. Well, look, you've delayed four years, and we're right on the eve of an election. So, can you maybe respond to that before they even say it? Sure. Be before I pass it over uh, to the deputy premier, there's no government in the history of this entire country, or this province, has invested more in health care, more into infrastructure than we have. We're investing over thirty billion dollars building hospitals right across this province, and the previous government, they talked about it. They have committees about it. They have task force about it, but they got nothing done. No matter if it's here or the new hospital in Windsor or the new hospital out in Mississauga, uh, we, we're a government that gets it done. Uh, long-term care, the rapid builds, uh, building a, a, a long-term care in 13 months, that's the difference. There's talkers and doers. We're doers, we get the job done. I'll pass it over to the minister. Well, as the Premier said, our government did make a commitment to spend over $30 billion on infrastructure over the next 10 years. And so a project like this doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. This is something that we've been working on for a long time, work with the hospital partners, with uh, Minister Sarkaria and Minister uh, MPP Santu as well. So we know that this is something that is needed by the people of Brampton, and we're announcing it now, but it's something that we've been working on for quite a long time. And it's not just that, it's the, it's the physical infrastructure, but it's also the operating costs. So we've been able to uh, increase uh, the uh, operating costs here in Brampton by over $16.5 million, in addition to replacing lost revenue that was lost as a result of, of uh, COVID and uh, making sure that they still have the, uh, the people and the facilities in order to continue operating. That's something that our government has been working on since day one. And as a follow-up just ab about that, uh, there's been a back and forth about whether Brampton was getting what it needed uh, from this government. Um, and as a non-Bramptonian, I have to say, I got confused very quickly about what, whether Brampton had a new hospital, didn't have a new hospital, what was happening. So we're getting a new ER, yes. new acute care, uh, cancer care. 
Uh, is this what Brampton needs, or does Brampton still need more to get uh, the ratio of, of beds to people that it deserves? This is a significant increase in the number of beds, so over 250 beds. That's going to really help with a rapidly growing uh, population such as is here in Brampton. Having a regional cancer centre as well is going to make a huge difference, not just for Brampton but for surrounding area. And having another emergency department, of course, is going to be very important. So this is really a big news for the city of Brampton and surrounding area plus the medical school that's going to be coming here to make sure that people who live in Brampton can be trained in Brampton and come back to serve the people of Brampton. Thank you. Good morning, Good Premier morning. Ford. This is uh, Nitin Chopra from Prime Asia yes. TV. Good to see uh, you. Thank you. Uh, Premier, uh, do you think like Brampton was ignored in previous year for last 10, 20 years, and now we yeah. have uh, uh, two MPPs from uh, uh, Brampton, and we have a strong city staff with two deputy mayors. Yeah. Uh, can you say that now Brampton is not ignored anymore, and they had a campaign that Brampton need more, Brampton need more, they yeah. need their fair share, there were so many campaigns, and in future, can you promise to Bramptonians that it won't be ignored anymore? Well, we're the only government that hasn't ignored them in four years, and thank you for the question. As a matter of fact, it's funny you say that. I was just telling uh, the team over there, uh, Brampton was ignored from previous governments for decades. All the way back, uh, the last time they got a lot of love was under Premier Bill Davis. Now, uh, Brampton's getting a lot of love, no matter if it's a, the medical school or uh, building a new hospital, uh, a wide range of different items. I know Amarjot uh, Sandu uh, just finished telling me that we've done so much for uh, so much for Brampton, he can't fit it on his brochure. So that's good news. We're going to continue showing a lot of love to the people of, of Brampton. They've been uh, underrepresented for many years under previous governments. Previous governments talked a good game, but they did absolutely nothing. And I, I want to thank uh, Minister Sarkaria and MPP Sandu for representing the, the people of, of Brampton there. But they're going to I have a special spot in my heart for Brampton. When I got married, I lived here for over five years on uh, right off Clark on Lisa Street. Hey, Lisa, I love the people here. I love the community. And I'll always make sure I look out for the people of Brampton. Uh, Premier, follow up. Uh, uh, as per provincial, provincial projections, in the next 20 years, the cancer cases in Osler is going to double. Uh, now, if you can uh, elaborate a little more about the uh, cancer segment, whether it will be in Peel Memorial or Brampton Civic, because earlier Bramptonians had to go out of Brampton to get the cancer treatment, and they really thank uh, this government for having a cancer which is not affecting one family but many of the Canadians. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that question. We're, we're investing over $3 million uh, for cancer care here in Brampton, and uh, someone who's probably a lot more knowledgeable about this than myself, I'll pass it over to the uh, Deputy Premier, and then maybe uh, Dr. Martino should come up and say a few words. He's uh, the leader of, of uh, Peel here, uh, William Osler. So maybe, uh, Minister, you wanna speak first? Well, we are currently reviewing the stage one proposal for the Cancer Center, which will be at, uh, at uh, Peel Memorial and it is going to be serving the people's needs for not just Brampton, but surrounding area. I agree with you, it's not fair that people have to travel a long distance to get cancer care treatments, especially the, the stress enough of, of having to have those um, treatments means that it needs to be close to home, it needs to be close to family and close to your own home. So that is something that we uh, feel is very important and that's why we're making this investment and we'll of course be expanding it as we move past the stage one proposal. But now I'll ask Dr. Martino to please come and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, certainly this community recognizes the uh, burden of cancer care, and, it, and you're right. It is going to increase over the next 20 years. We've got quite a dynamic cancer program here at William Osler, some really dedicated oncologists and staff that care for cancer patients within our region. Some do go outside of Brampton to receive their care. What this cancer center undoubtedly will do will allow those patients to receive their care here at, uh, at Brampton Civic and within our Osler health care system. That will include radiation oncology. It will include systemic therapy in a brand new building we hope to develop over the next five years. That's a cancer care system that is made for Brampton 
for the citizens of Brampton delivered by William Osler Health System. So we're very proud of that. And we're very proud of the fact that this government is supporting us in this journey. Hi, Premier Ford, Brittany Rosa with Global News. Hi. Wondering if you can you? give us, I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, wondering if you can give us a timeline for when you expect this project to be completed. Well, I look, well, you know something, I better pass it back to Dr. Martino. He, he knows uh, when we're gonna get the shovels in the ground and get it built. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Martino. Thank you, Premier. Uh, stage one planning will start. We've already began some of that process. We've, we're working at present with a number of partners within the GTA, uh, other health systems that are assisting us in developing the uh, Regional Cancer Center. Our hope is that we will have uh, the stage two, stage three process concluded over the next several years, and maybe in about five to six years, uh, have that uh, building in place and the services available for our community. Uh, one very important service is radiation oncology. Uh, right now, our citizens are going outside of the region to receive that. Our plan is to have that available for them here on the Brampton Civic site, where our major, uh, the major delivery of our cancer services is located. Thank you so much. And just to, just to follow up, this is both for the Premier and for Minister Elliott. How do you plan, obviously with a new hospital, like you said, you have to hire more staff, more nurses and more doctors. And given the staffing crisis that we're facing in the province, yeah. can you once again go over your plan for how you plan to do that? Obviously, you talked about the medical school. Um, what is the role that perhaps um, internationally educated um, nurses and doctors will play in that as well? Sure, we're, we're hiring thousands and thousands of more, more nurses. We're hiring more PSWs. We've increased the undergraduate and postgraduate uh, uh, schools to produce more doctors. But I'll, I'll pass this over to uh, Minister Elliott. Well, thank you for the question. We have both short-term and long-term solutions to the health human resources challenges that we have here in Ontario right now. Long term, of course, we have plans to train more nurses, uh, more personal support workers, and to retain them within the system. We have the system right now with uh, nurses that they will be paid a $5,000 retention uh, bonus uh, if they uh, are, stay in the workforce. And we're also training more people. We're also bringing in people, internationally trained nurses, who are already here, who haven't had the opportunity to get their Ontario credentials yet but we've been working with the College of Nurses of Ontario to allow them to partner with uh, nurses who are qualified to be able to work in long-term care homes and um, other locations. So that is how we're really boosting our, our numbers as well as the extern program where we have a lot of student nurses that are coming in to work in hospitals that are, they're being paid for that. Uh, but they also have the experience to get the training that they need. And this is really a win-win situation for everyone because they're boosting the uh, forces in the hospital. They can't act as nurses, but they can do a lot of other work so that uh, nurses have the time to spend time with the patients. For the externs, it gives them the opportunity to figure out what area of nursing they would like to work in permanently, but also gives them the self-confidence and knowledge that when they are hired, and many of them are hired by the same hospitals, when they graduate, they're ready to go from day one. Hi, Premier. Uh, Sabrina Gamer from the Brampton Guardian. Hi. Um, so I just want to clarify. So this um, big investment is going towards um, transforming Pier Memorial into a functioning hospital. Is that correct? Well, we're, we're going to be investing uh, in, in the uh, emergency uh, rooms. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the emergency department uh, coming here. We're also adding the $3 million into cancer care. And uh, we're, we're going to be building a new hospital, adding 250 new beds uh, to, to Brampton. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great investment. And so this is a, a large project, um, yep. and it will take some time. What do you say to Bramptonians who have been waiting for this announcement and now in the interim until this project is up and ready? I mean, what is going to happen in that time frame? Well, right now, um, we're going to work as quickly as possible to get the shovels on the ground. And it's unfortunate, previous governments uh, have ignored Brampton for many years. We aren't ignoring Brampton anymore. We're building a new hospital with, uh, again, uh, with 250 uh, additional beds. And I think that's going to help uh, the people of Brampton considerably.
Thank you so much. Last question. Hi, I'm Hi. Andrian with Hi, uh, Radio Canada. Hi. I'm going to just follow up on the questions that my colleague asked. It seems like this is just a transformation, adding more beds to this hospital, not building an actually new hospital, which the citizens of Brampton have been asking for for quite a while now. Well, I'll pass that over to the Minister of Health. Thank you. Well, this hasn't always been a 24-7 operating facility, uh, it, and that's what it is going to become. It is adding 250 more beds into the system, an emergency department, a full-service hospital. That's not what the people of Brampton had before. That's what this uh, $18 million grant is for, to allow for the planning for this to become a fully functioning hospital. And that's quite significant for the people of Brampton. Um, some people say that um, Brampton needs 800 beds in order to serve the population. This is 200, more than 250 beds or 250-ish beds. How many beds in total will there be with the new transformation? Uh, I would have to get the exact number of beds for you, but this is a significant addition of 250 extra beds, as well as having the emergency department, all of those facilities available for the people of Brampton. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.